So, Carolina, have you seen um, this version of the Dracula story before? I'm going to assume that you have. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Plenty of times. I re-saw it last night just because, you know, we were doing we're doing this thing. And also because I wanted to. Because I remember when you guys asked me, what movie do you want to do? I immediately said Dracula without even thinking about it. <laughs> I don't know why. I think that's when I was drinking uh, that night. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, let's do Dracula. And then I went back to washing the dishes and drinking whatever rum I had left over. So <laughs> blame it on that. Hello and welcome to Hold My Popcorn, where we make fun of the good movies and trash the bad ones. I'm Max Healy over in Nashville and in Sacktown, California. We've got John Anoshak. How you doing, John? Oh, I'm fantastic. I'm getting into character for the times, Max. I have a fine bottle of... 65% um, alcohol, Leopold Brothers, absinthe, verte, um, and it's Ooh. horrible. So, <laughs> but as I understand it, if it's over 60% alcohol, kills the virus. So there I'm just, uh, I'm investing in my future, Max. Yeah. How are you? I'm doing great. <laughs> Drinking a Corona, got a quarantini, it's just uh, <laughs> airborne, crushed up allergy medicine, hand sanitizer on the rocks. It also tastes disgusting. Uh, medicine never tastes good. <clears throat> no. All right, well, our regular co-host, Timmy, couldn't make it in today, but we do have a very special guest with us. You might know her from her work on Sirius Radio, co-host of a podcast including Movie Signs of the Mads, No Dogs in Space, on the last podcast network, and then also the podcast Professional Friends. Carolina Hidalgo is on the show. Yay! Hey, guys. Hey. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I, I'm also in character, but as Dracula, and or <laughs> or one of the orgy nymph ladies. I don't know which to... I, I haven't decided yet. Either way, you're horny, so it's all good. Yes, either way. That's a, this movie is horny. It's extremely and, horny. <laughs> I, I, that's why I like it. I, I just got to say, this movie is bad optics for tongues across the world. They, there's a little overuse of tongues. We'll get into that part, but bad optics all around. It's not good for the brand. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we'll we'll definitely really deep dive into that. And find out the whys of the scary old men and the <laughs> possible in method acting. Yes. <laughs> so, Carolina, uh, just having you on the show is just a very significant moment for us because first we never had a woman on the show, but Boo, also we know no. now for certain that a woman's going to listen to the beginning to the end of this. <laughs> so, thank you. Well, I'm totally going to listen to this from the beginning to the end. So, you 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 got me on your corner. <laughs> There awesome. we go. We got our first <laughs> vote, Max. Woo! At the very least. <laughs> <laughs> so for this very special episode and also being the halfway point, the Halloween, we watched Francis Ford Coppola's 1992 gothic, horny, romantic horror film, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Mm, Dracula. Yes. Rob Zombie. Yeah. Dracula. <laughs> God, if there like, was... that was a very important scene in the movie. You're right, uh, <laughs> the Rob Zombie one. Oh yeah, of course. No, he do it, baby. He happened to come <laughs> in. He's got dreadlocks. You know the whole thing. Yeah, he definitely stunk up the screen on that one. Little known scene deleted. Actually, they didn't air it <laughs> for the public. I was honestly <laughs> thinking a couple of times of the Jason Siegel Dracula song from um, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Just, that just kept on popping in my head like over and over again watching this. <laughs> When is Rob Zombie going to do a Dracula movie that people think is okay and then make a sequel that everyone just fucking hates? Uh, I think Netflix fucked him when they put out their little three-part miniseries. And the third part's like, God, oh. what is it, third part of uh, the Godfather series? Like, it doesn't yeah. exist. Oh, right. Well, I mean, yeah, well, he's made a couple good movies, but I guess the track record is unfortunate. That's all it is. Yeah. But hey, you're doing great, Rob Zombie. That's what I think. Uh, he's doing great. I agree. Keep up the good work, Rob. You know what? He's sh he's showing people like me that vitamin D is just overrated. And that's what I <laughs> truly appreciate about him. I mean, like his MTV cribs back in the day. Yeah, I don't really like water. Uh, the outdoors. Uh, pool's broken. Let's go back inside. That's that's what I love about that man. But you'll get his <laughs> moment with Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Dracula stars Gary Oldman, Winona Ryder, Keanu Reeves, and Anthony Hopkins. That's the Dracula that we watched, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the 1992, the, uh, the the modern version in some ways or another, because they got Winona Ryder and Keanu Reeves. Yeah. What a get. Oh, Keanu, a, Keanu, with acting. a fucking British accent. Oh, no, darling, no. That was the entire <laughs> thing. Ugh. 
He's now young. He's a young man. <laughs> Sound like a fucking beetle. Well, when I, when I was a kid and I was listening to Keanu Reeves' accent, like, I never noticed anything. Maybe it's because I grew up in Mexico and I was like, why? He's speaking English. He's an Englishman, right? <laughs> it makes total sense. And then later when you get older, you're like, oh, no, that's Keanu Reeves trying. Uh, you know, while he's filming his scenes, he's, like, trying his best and his dialogue coach <laughs> over the side of the set just face palming. But, you know, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't ruin the movie. No. At least not no. for me. No, no, definitely not. But I was very much entertained watching him with his little, tw- you could almost see a little twitch where he was trying not to flip his hair every time, like, you know, J- Dracula came on screen and just go like, hair flip. Whoa. <laughs> but I, that's what yeah, I was just, hoping just for the head. entire time. If there were bloopers in this, that would sell another million copies of this. If it was just <laughs> Guaranteed. Guaranteed. By the way, so you can thank Winona for this movie because she was originally going to be playing, um, Michael Corleone's daughter in Godfather 3, and then she had to back out for, like, mental health reasons. But as, like, a makeup, she sent the script to Coppola, who loved it. Oh, oh well, hey. Yep. Yeah, good, good for them. I there mean, go. good for Coppola, too, especially after that whole debacle, unfortunately, with Godfather 3. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm glad, because Winona Ryder, she's, I mean, she's always Winona Ryder, but she always does such a great job. Especially with this and the, the horrible outfits that they were putting people in in this movie, which had no relevance to the times half the way. I, yeah. Nobody wears that many tassels, and, we'll, and I'm going to talk about Billy later. I think he's offensive <laughs> to my people. All right, well, let's get into it. Should we get into the movie? Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right, well, the movie opens up with uh, Anthony Hopkins narrating the story of the Romanian knight, Dracula, who, after a battle victory, brutally impales his Turkish enemies alive for Jesus. Hmm. <laughs> for Jesus. Yeah, that, that's when he, uh, I mean, like, they're already, that's what I like about this movie. They set the scene in just five minutes, and then, yeah. and then it goes like, Dracula, and it's like, wow, we're up to speed very quickly. Yes. This is good. 400 years later. This is later. great. Whoa. We, I feel like we never do get a good background story on Dracula and most other films. It's usually like, yeah, he's there. You know about him. He was running around in the 60s, you know, Halloween candy. Like, and that's all you get. It's just like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Making or, human steak kebabs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, fun fact. Apparently, uh, George W. Bush can trace his lineage back to Vlad the Impaler. No way. That uh, is so true. I knew it. Ah. But... <laughs> Wonderful synopsis, wonderful lead up just to set it off. Um, not so much onto into the armor that Gary's got for that. The feng shui is a little bit fucked up. It's bad juju all around. That armor oh. looks almost exactly like the suit in the cell, that JLo movie. Yeah. Well, that's why I like it. I know it's weird, but I like it. I for some reason I just it just felt like some really cool plastic that you could just peel off or crack off. And I don't know. I I was just a weird kid. And I was like, who is that guy that kind of looks like a 70s rock star? <laughs> kind of cool. Kind of looks Why like Sid Vicious be- for some reason. <laughs> yeah, which was Wait Gary a minute. Oldman. I know. Wait a minute. Perfect. <laughs> oh, Gary. Oh, Gary. Yeah. Gary looks, he's got locks too, which makes me cry about my days when I used to have hair and luscious <laughs> locks. But mm. <laughs> Gary Oldman is great in this movie. He's crushing it. Yes, yes. He does a great job as just, you know, angry man, romantic man, and then uh, just weird host to, you know, Jonathan Harker. I, I, Everything about him is so creepy, but at the same time, you just can't help but just stay, which is probably why he kills so many people. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm hypnotized. Uh, why doesn't he have an Oscar? Why does he not? I mean, he has one, but he doesn't have enough. No, that's right. Yeah. That's, what I'm saying. that's my that's, point. That's right. <laughs> yeah, he had to put on a fat suit for that. <laughs> well, going back into this. So the butthurt Turks send a false message to Dracula's wife, played by Winona Ryder, saying that he died in battle. So she throws herself into the river, which means she can't go to heaven since she committed suicide, which leads Dracula to be upset, to say the least. Oh, right. Like, so upset he breaks up with God. Oh, and- yeah. <laughs> Pulls a full Ron Burgundy in a glass box of emotion. In this just, ah! Whoa! I mean, just, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Mm. But, but I mean, that's how I. That's how it, ex, it, it explains everything, and that's the best thing. It's like this is why. Okay, and then like the whole audience, we just believe it from beginning to end. <laughs> Even yeah. though he does his, you know, uh, the the shot that comes from like up ahead and then moving back, where he goes no, <laughs> makes perfect sense. Uh, at least all the aluminum cans didn't crack in the background, and this turned into a Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he does kind of look like Palpatine in this, too, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah good point. By but, the way, it's, go ahead, John. Get, no, Max, you know you need to talk about. Oh, I mean, well, the whole metal as fuck thing with him just, like, stabbing Shit. that big bleeding cross and drinking the blood. <laughs> That's, uh, <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> on a scale of, like, one to ten, like, what is the metal meter on that, John? Dude, I mean, we're we're off the metal meter with this one. I mean, this is literally like a ten and a half. I mean, this destroys worlds. It destroys planets. I mean, like, if you want to let your future in-laws know who has the most heavily throbbing manhood in town, high vascularity, I mean, seriously, call 1-800-METAL-METER for a fucking free consolation and blood explosion therapy. This shit was fucking insane, dude. You can stab a fucking sword through a metal crucifix and it just so happens to bleed. I mean, (laughs) and I mean, gushes of blood. This is actually one of the only times in the film, too, that I thought that the blood was um, properly viscous and dark enough to write your name with, which is Mm -hmm. how I like my wine, by the way. So, (sighs) which is great. It could be a couple of wine. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yes, a little good, uh, a little good placement there. I thought it was so cool when he drank out of that. Like it was very, oh. I don't know, like a kind of holy grail ish, but the oh, opposite yeah. of that. Yeah, <laughs> like literally the opposite of the holy grail. I mean, it's amazing because usually it would be like, "Oh, Dominus Apache felt yeah, the blood of Christ," and this one it's ah! yeah, the just blood the Norwegian of goth yeah, metal just, screaming. Yeah, do, 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 do. I mean, it's, it was great, and he takes it, you know two hands and full armor and just gulps it. It's going down his, you know, his beard. Just, ugh, oh, it's metal. Everything about it's fantastic. And then peppered with a few more. No! And then Dracula. <laughs> Boom. I know. I'm glad they didn't like include that one scene where he's just like, guys, I don't feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yep. they took that out. It was a good idea. It was great. I like it. I like the whole thing. <laughs> Arms stretched, hunched over, just like dry heaving. It's like, oh, it's too much. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, this is a little uh, No Dogs in Space trivia fact, too. So that shriek that Dracula does is um, ADR'd by punk rocker Lex Interior from The Cramps. Very cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. Yay. Uh, I love The Cramps. But do I love Dracula more, though? Now, that's the question. Mm. That's something that we are need to drill down into. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. he's my favorite monster, really. I mean, I feel like he's, like, the most vocal one. I mean, he's... You can actually have a conversation. <laughs> maybe, maybe have some dinner, hang out, take a walk. Like, there's a lot you can do, as opposed to, like, a yeah. mommy or Frankenstein type. You know? No, True. seriously. Dracula is my type. This is, this some is, girls. Yeah, you know, I mean, like, yeah, I just didn't have the grandparents around. So let's talk about the invention of the combustion motor. How did that go, Dracula? You know, like things <laughs> like that. Really, like, what do you think about the Internet? I mean, those are the kinds of conversations I want to have with him before he rips my jugular out, just so I can know. <laughs> what did you wipe with? I mean, these are the big questions, especially these days. I mean, COVID-19 crisis and the toilet paper has gone. What do we use? This is the kind of knowledge that hasn't been passed down, folks. Servants. I use servants. Anyways, Uh, but I'm getting off track. All right, well, cut the present day, 1897 London, with real estate lawyer Jonathan Harker, played by the horrifically miscast Keanu Reeves, being assigned to the Count Dracula account after his last lawyer went batshit crazy. See what I did Mm. there, guys? You like that? Yeah, that was, that was, I I threw up in my mouth next. (laughs) Punkcast. (laughs) Oh, God. Ugh, no more. Just lay off the fucking axe puns. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> well you know tom waits as renfield is yeah. probably the coolest thing ever that's the thing like there was just everyone's in this cast it's it's great i mean like i didn't even know it was tom waits until like maybe a few years ago and that's like the hundredth screening of watching dracula <laughs> and that's how good tom waits is i didn't know it was tom waits until yesterday <laughs> when i like just looked up the cast i'm like that's tom waits yeah isn't that amazing you know what? That's funny. I just thank you both for letting me know that because the entire time I was looking at him, I'm like, 
this motherfucker's a musician. <laughs> he's got to oh, yeah. be a musician. And now I'm looking like, oh, yeah, he's a fucking musician. So thanks for educating the preschooler, guys. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> John, so Tom Waits is the guy that, you know, that that um, Australian interview from the 70s that you sent me of that guy who sounded exactly like Heath Ledger's Joker. That's him. This is him? Yeah. Ha! 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 Carolina, have you Sorry. ever seen that video? <laughs> no, I have not. Okay. It's like a 1978 Australian TV interview of Tom Waits, and he's just, he's clearly like super high on heroin during the interview. But if you listen to it, it is exactly the same pitch and tone of Heath Ledger's Joker, like to a T. Yeah. It's crazy. That's amazing. You see, Heath Ledger really did his work. Yeah. He, he really <laughs> dug through. Thanks, Heath. So, so he likes bugs. Um, he likes to eat bugs. Uh, mm-hmm. Kuna Matata. A, like, Kuna Matata. Uh, <laughs> don't get me started on The Lion King. I think it's bad for the youth. There's too much gang violence and drug usage in it. But... Um, it, it, did they ever explain the bugs? Uh, I think they did, but I was too busy saying, hey, that's Tom Waits. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. And then and then him like chewing it and eating it. Like it just the whole time you're just like, I love that cr- crunching noise. Yeah. I, I, I'm I not alone. Good. I'm not alone in this. <laughs> no, 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 not the least. It was least. fascinating. And I mean, to Coppola's credit, considering, you know, the era and everything, I mean, his ability to be able to just use simple audio and zoom ins at the perfect moment with a lack of technology to be oh, able man. to just gross the audience out, like it zooms in right at the second that like, okay, he's going to slurp up a big old weevil. Like, ooh, ooh. yeah, this is masterclass <laughs> by Coppola. Um, I'll get into that in a second here too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, right after this, you know, this Victorian surfer bro says goodbye to his future bride to be Mina, also played <laughs> by Winona, and jumps on this blood red sky train to Transylvania, and proceeds to drop acid and trip balls the entire way until the wolves <laughs> show up. Yeah, that that journey is intense. <laughs> That's a. It, it looked like like a scene of like Total Recall when they're in Mars. <laughs> Yeah. That's what Transylvania looked like to me. I'm like, why is there red rocks everywhere? <laughs> now, to your fine, point, fine. to your point, Carolina, like they do a really good job of differentiating Transylvania from basically anywhere else on the planet in this. Mm-hmm. Like they got they got strange armor that you want to peel off like an onion. They got Mars rocks. <laughs> you know, there are wolves that just follow everybody around. I mean, it's like a tuba band in New Orleans. It's really strange. And it's just so different from everywhere else. And they make it seem like this alien place that only a monster like Dracula could come from, which is just so, so well done. So also Coppola's camera tricks in this are amazing because everything in this was practical effects, except for like the the blue fire. That's the only CGI he used in the entire movie. So he made it like old Hollywood. So in that that train shot, when, um, you know, Dracula's eyes come over the mountain, that was just done by layering different shots on top of each other. Just old school oh, style. That's awesome. And didn't they do like the scene when they're all fighting in the beginning? I'm sorry, I'm going back a little oh, bit. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like, didn't he use like, I mean, to me, it seemed like a lot of miniatures or marionettes yeah. and things like that. Like, it felt like you're watching like a, one of those weird gothic theater shows that mm. and, and maybe that was his point. And I think that's great. Uh, it, it just just having like a whole scene and it doesn't look real, but it feels real. Like the whole time, I'm like this looks great. No. <laughs> I don't know why I'm like telling Coppola, you're doing a good job. Like, <laughs> Thank you. It's about time well someone done, told me on TV. <laughs> well done, buddy. Well, like even the uses, uh, the use of shadows throughout. Like you know, they kill a horse at one point, but manage to you know not piss off Peta because it's just a horse. You know, it's just genius mm-hmm. little strokes like that and flourishes that are just. Sexy. Yeah. I mean, so like in the next scene too, the long arm coming over to him, they, what they did was they just had Gary Ullman on a camera crane and they just moved him closer and they moved the camera at the same time to make it look like it was stretching. Just like simple, oh. practical stuff, which is crazy. Which it, it, and that's the reason why this movie holds up too, because he didn't use any of that shitty 1992 CGI that would just look terrible today. Like everything holds up because it was real. Yeah. It's good. It didn't like turn out like Space Jam. You know, it's just going to animate all the characters. It'll be great. It'll be great. Trust us. Trust us. (laughs) We'll throw Bill fucking Murray into it. It'll be fine. It'll be okay. Bill Murray's great in that movie. Yeah, he is. But, uh, and then so also for the shadows too, uh, what they had was they just had somebody like just pretty much behind the screen mimicking Oldman's moves. So they just had another dude doing shadows and then they would have him just kind of like go and look like he's getting ready to choke Keanu. That's all they used. Just simple stuff. 
Huh. Yeah, just hire a guy. No, that makes total yeah. sense. It's awesome. So yeah, I mean, spoiler alert: um, Keanu Reeves meets Dracula. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> Wait, spoiler, John, because we can't do the podcast anymore. No. <laughs> All right, though. We'll be back next week. All um, right. Yeah. See you, folks, for part two and a half. <laughs> we'll tell you how the dinner went. Spoiler alert: not well. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, you, you get reintroduced to the shape-shifting 400-year-old Count Dracula who invites Keanu to his totally not creepy dinner and then uh, pretty much forces him to stay at the castle for a month after seeing a picture of Mina that looks just like his dead wife. Oh, yeah, he's like, you must stay with me. And then he's, and I remember Keanu Reeves' uh, character, Jonathan Harker, being like, ah, uh, man, uh, I don't know. And for some reason, he's like, you have no choice. And he's like, okay. <laughs> It was the quickest, easiest way to make, to keep someone hostage. And (laughs) my favorite part is like Keanu Reeves' character eventually, like after a while, he's like, I know now that I've been taken hostage. And I'm like, oh my God, it's been a month. Yes, you have. (laughs) Like also in. I got a history test that I need to get done. In the initial like hard sales pitch to Keanu about like you're staying, this is an offer you can't refuse. Literally, doesn't he pull a fucking sword on him at some at some point for no reason? Yeah, or is that later where he just like no, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right, and just like pulls a sword? It's like wait, whoa, whoa. Just yeah, like I worked yeah. for God. He's like, oh, that didn't go well. He's like, how dare you? Like, whoa, like, holy shit. <laughs> He's asserting dominance in his own home. I, I see it all the time. That hairdo <laughs> is intimidating enough to assert dominance wherever he goes. He has a nice so, pair of hair titties flopped on top of his head. The inspiration for little Nicky. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <ugh. laughs> also, so like, you know how his palms, I was thinking too, is this where the Eminem line, like I haven't had a woman in years, my palms are too hairy to hide. Is that where this comes from? <laughs> yeah. It, what line is that? I'm sorry. So I think I need to hear that again. It's in um the My Name Is song, the Eminem song, when he goes, "I haven't had a woman in years. My palms are too hairy to hide." Oh yeah, and he so has that a is super a, furry palms. So it's so fucking weird. It is an old myth that if you do yeah pleasure yourself ah, too much, okay. then, yeah, you, you can you know get hairy palms so to speak, or it's more of like a, a diss, like oh you have hairy palms, sir. I bite my thumb at you, stop. Nah, you know it's that kind of a thing. <laughs> You know, where these days it's like, yeah, man, you know, I accept uh, everybody for who they are. What's up, bro? Uh, so things have changed. <laughs> yes. Men with hairy palms can just walk around. Free. Totally fine. No, we're not going to even look at you weird. Nope. No, not in the least bit. It's perfectly fine. We're good with it. We're good with it. <laughs> Especially now. Definitely not looking at you at all. <laughs> all right. Not looking at much of anybody. <laughs> so it's safe to say things are getting a little weird at Casa de Count with the wall crawling and razor licking and just overall laws of physics not applying inside the castle. But then you get not one, not two, but three sets of vampire yabos. Oh my gosh. Everywhere. Like just coming out of the woodworks, coming out of the cloth. Like just where did they come from? I was asking the same thing. I was wondering, I mean, I don't, I, I, maybe we're, we're just staring at uh, Dracula too much that we're like missing the plot. <laughs> we're just <laughs> laughing at Keanu's accent. Because <laughs> I do feel like I've missed some plot points there. Just, just <laughs> a I, few. And this, I've yeah. seen like all the Dracula movies. But <laughs> yeah, this was a difficult movie to kind of like take like to take notes on <laughs> as far as like the, just the whole <laughs> plot line goes. I was telling John that I'm like, I've never actually really had to pay attention to this movie because a lot of times I'm just kind of just like glossing in and out and just looking at the backgrounds and just seeing how like freaking gothic it is. I'm like, wait a minute, what's happening now? Just the sheets are turning into naked women. It is something yeah. that you almost take in with every single sense that you have. Um, even as just an audio visual experience, it really just yeah. kind of washes over you the entire thing. Um, it is not a warm blanket. <laughs> no, <laughs> especially after Dracula quickly just cock blocks all the fun by feeding his wives a baby. That's not good. Oh, yeah. I remember that when he walks in and he's just like, he's kind of like, like they're his cats or something. He's like, get, <laughs> yeah. get, shoot. <laughs> Scott, yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, don't make me take the broom again. You know? <laughs> get the spray bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we like to keep him in the laundry room, but sometimes they get out. They're not really socialized to people. (laughs) 
They're 600 years old. I'm sorry. Yeah, they just they just try to eat and fuck everything. It's bad. It's just. <laughs> Well, speaking of fucking everybody, you cut to Mina at the house of her super rich and super skanky friend Lucy, who reads a letter from Jonathan that pretty much just says, I'm doing great over here. Things are uh, going well. I'm going to stay a while. When out of nowhere, a big horny rainstorm appears, which makes Mina and Lucy make out with each other. Then that night, Mina finds Lucy getting date raped and neck bitten by a werewolf Dracula, who immediately turns around and goes, uh, you didn't see me. It vanishes. So there are so many uh, just allusions to what is going to happen in Hollywood down the road after this movie was made. But I and I understand that technically Dracula and vampires are supposed to be able to shapeshift into werewolves. But how many different monsters did he turn into in order to make this into a Dragon Ball Z series? Because, like, (laughs) I don't feel like we saw his final form. No, no. I mean, I mean, uh, unless you call his final form Winston Churchill, <laughs> which took a while to get to. Uh, but there you have it. Here's an Oscar, sir. Hey, he stuck to character. He uh, he doesn't drink wine either. Yeah, the, the blood was, has some high cholesterol, and that blood he ended up drinking turned into Winston. Oh, God. <laughs> there's a lot of juxtaposition going on in this scene, though. I didn't know really know else how to sum it up. I'm just like, there's just this shit's happening. You got that that Doctor Seward is like getting high on morphine. Dracula's like eating people on the boat. It's just there's so much shit going on at the same time. This just turns yeah. into a metaphor for the fucking '60s or some shit. I don't know because that's what happens. Like you have Woodstock in the rainstorm with people making out with one another. Um, you've got. Well, you got all the Woodstocks. You got all Woodstock the ninety ninety uh, seven in here too, or Woodstock you know, ninety nine in here too. Yeah, and it's you can slowly start seeing show. the you know the acceptance of people with hairy palms start creeping in. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's impressive stuff. It's way ahead of its time. <laughs> We've gone a long way. Uh. Yes, we have. <laughs> so then, a regenerated young Dracula explodes out of a crate box like Donkey Kong in London, and he's on the prowl for Mina. Looking fly as fuck. And now it's okay for me to see him. Yeah, yeah. He looked, he did look fly as fuck. Mm-hmm. I do have to admit. And especially his I'm from out of town bit. It worked. <laughs> John Mulaney bit that he had, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm new I'm in town. New in town. <laughs> it's good to see that some pickup lines are still timeless. It really is. It really is. <laughs> Excuse me. I am 400 years old. I drink blood. <laughs> I'm new in town. <laughs> I'm on the ret- the government retirement plan, baby. Don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> but this whole story would be pretty romantic if it didn't involve him just like brutally killing and raping people just to get to Mina. Oh, right. Yeah. He, well, he's <laughs> like, look at all I sacrificed just for you. <laughs> you know? This is my cross to bear. <laughs> yes. He waited hundreds of years. I mean, it, or... Maybe it wasn't so much a coincidence, but it it's the weirdest coincidence of them all when he happens to see a picture of his wife 400 years later. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, dude, that's a sign, man. You got to mm-hmm. go for it. <laughs> I need to kill everybody to get to her. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So Dracula takes Mina to the first porno theater or something and drags her into a corner, Harvey Weinstein style, and delivers that famous line of, I've traveled oceans in time to find you. And then he's about to bite her in the neck when a big bad wolf runs into the theater. But Dracula's cool with the wolf and uses it as a prop in the same way that Joe Exotic or Dr. Antil uh, uses tigers to seduce straight men and teenage girls. Yeah. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Or Dr. Antil, whatever it, the fuck it, that dude's it, name is. It, it did guy. pull me, it pulled me back to Lethal Weapon. Um, it really did, uh, but a bad <laughs> how, way. How so? Well, because fucking Mel Gibson tains a fucking Rottweiler to oh, impress yeah. his love interest. And then here we are with Dracula, except Dracula looks way fucking cooler and he doesn't even have a mullet. He just has luscious locks <laughs> and blue sunglasses <laughs> and a white wolf. And that helps. Yeah. Also, timeless mm-hmm. pickup lines and actions. And this wasn't this when they were drinking their absinthe at this point? <gasps> Was it? I uh, think it's a little bit after that. <gasps> that oh, yeah. Yeah. This, yeah, okay, this is the so first they were, time they, were, they meet. Were, yeah. Drinking the absinthe and they're, you know, spouting out, I don't know, Led Zeppelin lyrics to each other. <laughs> then they dance the Over night the away. the hills and far away. And <laughs> there is a sunrise over there. And, um, I, 
it's just one of those meat cute things, I guess, uh, that people use in movies. <laughs> and this is the best one. It's tripping balls in absence, you know. The, the, the green does. fairy that lives inside of the absinthe is <laughs> the, uh, the passion. Kiss me. <laughs> Mina gets a letter from uh, from Keanu saying that she needs to go to Transylvania to get married because he broke out of the castle and she's in grave danger. Mm. Mm. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I, I remember that now. I just <laughs> saw this again. <laughs> <laughs> You know what it is? I took you back there. (laughs) You grow up watching for years and so many times, but you're watching it in parts. So in my brain, it's like she meets Dracula. She's somewhat slightly seduced by him or at least feels a little guilty. And then all of a sudden, you know, we're back in the cast. It it goes back and forth. I'm sure it does a great job. But man, I forgot about that part. <laughs> he got away. I, told, I, I just thought he just decided to leave. <laughs> you know, he's like walking down the castle like, hello? And he, no, Dracula left? You know, and then he just went after him or something. <laughs> he just walked out. All right, guys, been fun. Um, like this. Yeah, uh, I'm a little tired. Uh, losing all my blood and all. I'm just, I need to get the fuck out of here. I'll see you. It's Girl Scout cookie season. <laughs> <laughs> uh, surprisingly they don't deliver in Transylvania I, I, I gotta go <laughs> they're more persistent than Dracula unfortunately for me got stuck with six boxes <laughs> so um are, are you gonna sign this deed or no <laughs> I don't need to close this fucking deal why I was here to begin with yeah why didn't he yeah. at least try to forge his signature to try to get some bucks out of it like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. We well Wrath of this, all the boys in the yard and Van Helsing, because we've been introduced to him by Anthony Hopkins at this point. Oh, my boy, dude. This is my guy. <laughs> Anthony saved this for me because I was just way too gummied up to be able to deal with this most like the first half of the movie. And then Anthony came and saved it. Yeah. <laughs> ja. Ja. Yeah, that's true. You know, I'm a big fan of Anthony Hopkins. And I was just like, I, I know he was narrating throughout the movie. But then when he shows up and you could see his face, you know, Boom. I did what everyone else does. Like, hey. <laughs> oh, hi, friend. That's great. Uh, I know you. Yeah. Well, he has a little uh, on the DL role in the beginning of the intro, too, in the cold open. Because he plays that priest who tells Dracula <laughs> that his wife can't go to heaven. Is this, oh, yeah. Is well. that him? You yeah. mean Monty Python's God? Or <laughs> like <Yeah>. Eastern Orthodox <laughs> God? <laughs> yep. <laughs> No, you shall not. <laughs> Bad timing, Father. You should probably wait until after he's done screaming with a sword. <laughs> yeah, let him mourn first, and then let then break the news. Yeah. By the way, your true love's uh, soul. Uh, she's she's fucked. <clears throat> she's trapped in hell forever, and there's nothing you can do about it. Okay, I'll find my way out. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so all the boys in the yard, though, Van Helsing, they find out that Lucy's a vampire after she goes in to bite one of her fuck boys, Quincy. Yeah. Oh, right. Yes. I forgot that she has like a bunch of suitors that she could choose from. And it was like Richard, uh, Richard Grant, I think was one of them. Oh, he was great. Yeah. Arthur. Oh. Yep. <laughs> Arthur. Yeah. And Carrie Elways and, um, Winston. and Billy Campbell, yeah. right? Yep. Yep. Billy, Billy Campbell. Campbell. The yeah. Billy Campbell. Rocketeer. Wesley from Princess Bride, who's the husband. Got everybody. Uh, that motherfucker, that, uh, he had more tassels than he knew what to do with. I mean, just, oh, I got all these tassels that are coming off my jacket and gone. Oh, it's like a, like a mare in heat. I mean, just the weird Southern <laughs> shit that you get out of him. <laughs> <laughs> but sorry, Caroline, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, no, no. Um, you know, that kind of, uh, his accent was, I thought, wonderful. But I'm not saying, uh, you know, right. But it's still <laughs> wonderful. You're, it was you're something. Just, you're bra- the brownie yeah. points. You've got enough brownie points. You're good. Now you can trash on the South. I'm, I'm, I'm okay from here on out. I'm okay from here on out. You're good. I, know, I liked how the three guys were trying to like man up, you know, like just one up each other and just man up and be like, no, I'll save you. No, I'll save you over here. And, <laughs> and having no idea. No, we must. You know what? Let's ask Anthony Hopkins. Yes, that's his name now. <laughs> Somebody call Anthony, damn it, man. Spare no expense, true quote. Spare no yep. expense. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Grant. Appreciate it. 
<laughs> Let's put some more leeches on her. That that will that'll do it. <laughs> it worked for our first president. It'll work for her. Oh my goodness! Why? How did her breast pop out for the sixth time in a row? How did this keep happening? I don't know. She's unconscious, but she keeps on taking her top off. <laughs> oh, that's true. They did. They did. Um, I, I did notice that. I was like, wow, they're using every opportunity possible to show what a. Um, how she could be, I don't know, such a caring mother one day uh, <laughs> where that's to happen. Oh, it's, 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 she was full <laughs> and, and, good, and good for her. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. You know what? She practiced a healthy diet. God damn it. You know, she, I, I don't know where to take this, but it's <laughs> <laughs> I, I left it for you because I didn't know where it was going. Either. You know, I was talking about bad optics for for tongues earlier. Um, I'm just going to just patch that over to the female breast because I there's a lure to that. And respect to be paid, like respect must be paid. And in any second, this was just like, oh, there there we are. OK, um, yeah, like Game of Thrones already desensitized everybody to the miracle that is them. Uh, but th- here we are just every second just pop up. Oh, well, okay. Well, last second she was fine and okay. Huh. Greek mm-hmm. nude. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> so Dracula gets stood up by Mina, which makes him cry purple tears and also kind of like melt his face as he creates a violent windstorm and settles on his sloppy seconds, aka old redhead Lucy, which is uh again juxtaposed with Jonathan and Mina getting married. In the second most violent wedding and murder montage and that uh, Francis Ford Coppola has ever done. <laughs> that Oh, yeah, that's true. It's very like today we settle all family business and then there's a baptism and then they kill yeah. the head of the five families and it goes back and forth. It's like, I see what you're doing there, Coppola, and I like it. But I've also seen this, and but I'm going to keep seeing this anyway. <laughs> Mo Green gets shot on the head. Dracula turns into a wolf and just like grips his, Lucy's neck completely out, just turns a bedroom into the elevator scene from The Shining. <laughs> that was an odd way to illustrate um, a climax. Uh, um, <laughs> um, and, and there was also no, there was no hint that the explosion of blood that literally just like just bellows out from the bed sheets that anyone had to clean that up. <laughs> I, oh, what a that, mess. That was a mess. I mean, just saying, that was a fucking mess from someone who has just destroyed their own bedroom, not being able to run to the bathroom in time to throw up before. That was a mess. That was an investment of time. <laughs> I love that you're watching this movie and it's all like this like romantic gothic horror film and you're just sitting there like, who's going to clean that up? Yeah. Huh. Somebody's got to be connected to the common person when you see these things. Like somebody had to deal with that shit. Way to go. <laughs> that's, that's in the scene, like what they, they extended. He's got one of the guys going like, I was going to clean up this shit. <laughs> well, like also later on, and let's just talk about how bad white people are for about three seconds. But you see, um, you see Carrie from the Princess Bride, you know, Lord Arthur, at some point when they're on a train <laughs> going somewhere very cold because he has like three skinned bears sewed together in a big cloak on his back. He walks into the fucking train to talk to all of his pals, takes his jacket off, throws it on the floor. The poor gentleman with the turban behind him has to pick it up off the floor, bow to him, and then walk away. I'm like, what? <laughs> So, yeah, once again, I asked the question, who cleaned up the blood? (laughs) (laughs) The poor man in the turban. (laughs) Unsung hero of this movie. Yeah. Cleaning team. (laughs) Yeah. So after this, everyone's mourning the dead Lucy, who looks a lot like Marilyn Manson in that glass coffin. When uh, Van Helsing asks for a small and simple request where he wants to cut off her head and take out her heart. I love that. To the point. (laughs) You know, they, th- that's it. Like, I mean, whatever uh, the my favorite thing about Anthony Hopkins's character was he was just like very honest. Like, is she dying? Yes. Yes, she's dying. <laughs> yes. I'm going to cut out her heart. What, what's the big deal? Like, perfect. Please tell me how it is. The best doctor ever. <laughs> Thank have, you for your oh, service, doctor. I have worked with Germans for quite some time in my life. And I can say a hundred percent that all of them are that honest, that to the point straight, like, yeah, what this is, this is, this is what we, no, not an autopsy. I've just cut off our head and take out our heart. No, no, no. Why are you walking away? What? <laughs> Where are you what? going? What? What? 
Oh. Oof, this yeah. was a laugh out loud moment. I literally was cracking up when he said that, just so nonchalantly too. <laughs> just yeah. No, 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 that's an autopsy. I just cut off her head and take her heart. No. <laughs> so the boys go to Lucy's mausoleum and she's gone. But then she appears with a baby as a snack. So Van Helsing throws up his Jesus piece, which makes Lucy throw up a scary movie comical amount of blood on him. And right before the, uh, right before her and uh, you know Robin Hood, Men in Tights dude. It's able to spike her in the heart, and then Van Helsing cuts her head off. But before all of that, let's not forget that Van Helsing and his crazy accent, like, no, no, everybody hide. And they all, like, hide <laughs> yeah. around the corner, and she could clearly see them. They're just like, oh, Surprise. with torches. No, everyone hide. <laughs> 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 she won't be surprised. Uh, <laughs> that scene frightened me when I was a kid. And now I just, I love it. Like her whole outfit and everything. I mean, it, it, it did creep me out. I thought that woman, uh, the actress Sadie Frost, I thought she was a real vampire mm. for a while. Cause she did, I, mean, I don't know what, how they did it. I know maybe in, they try to make it look weird or she's like climbing in backwards or, and then they speed it up forwards in some way. I think Coppola was doing that when he yeah. was filming it, but whatever it just, it, what you said with fever dream it totally looks like that. Yeah. And, yeah, definitely. And then she's wearing like a, you know, white gown that looks like like a baby's communion outfit or whatever, or baptism outfit. And <laughs> and, and, then, and then the blood, I mean, it everything yeah. goes. Everything, it, red goes really well with white. <laughs> what can I say? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yes, 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 yeah, yes, it, yes. It, it, it's a Marilyn Manson music video. That's how, what she looks like. <laughs> <laughs> can hear the drums in the back. She's coming down. Yeah. Well, but also like, you know, especially, you know, to your point, I mean, that actress, the second she goes full vampire, I mean, her, all of her movement changes the way she mm. has her head craned, you know, really resting on the weight of her neck. Um, she becomes very feline and serpentine almost in a way. Um, uh, serpentine isn't quite the right. That's running away from bullets, but it's, it, but she becomes very slithery, very sneaky. And also with all of the big flowing uh, clothes and robes and everything, which is also kind of used a lot in the rest of the film where you can never quite see how someone is moving. They're always kind of floating around when they're a vampire mm -hmm. or they're a monster, um, you know, or they pop up on the other side of the screen really quick. Um, how they're going to move is always chaotic. It's always mysterious. It's always very strange. It's always very off-putting. And she was spectacular. The second the white makeup and the fangs came on, I was... Oh, yeah. I wasn't... Uh, I told your wife to leave the room. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, children. Uh, Daddy needs to watch the Olympics now. Let's just go with the <laughs> <laughs> You're right, and I, I liked uh, her voice too. It was like very like, like breathy, she, mm. like almost like she was like had a whistle in her throat or something. It's like, <sighs> ah, ah, Mina, come here, you know, or yeah. something. Like, go, go, get laid. <laughs> It'll be okay. It's time. Remember the book, Arabian Nights. <laughs> Going back to the fever dream too. While this all this is happening and her head gets chopped off, Dracula's in his like little rat nest and he gets super pissed off. And you get like a Nick Cage Mandy movie like vision of her like head just spinning in like neon red abyss of like nothing. Uh, those are called intrusive thoughts. Oh, we've all had. <laughs> but several listening to you guys talk. <laughs> yeah. So after this, um, what old Rennie? warns Mina that she needs to leave Dracula's after her, which she's right because Dracula then turns into some like green fog, appears in Mina's room, confesses that he's Dracula, which pisses her off for a minute because she killed her best friend. And then right after that, she goes just, all right, now bite me. Go ahead. Please do it. And she gets uh, over that really fast. Yes, she does. I mean, yeah. she, she hits him like consistently for quite some time with some strength. And I have to say that uh, Gary was bruised after that scene because she went at that chest. <laughs> I was like, how? But then immediately after, okay, yeah, let's live together forever. I'm over yeah. that now. I need to get that out. And it's literally forever. And <laughs> <laughs> that whole scene, I yeah, when she's like, you know what? It's okay. We we can get over anything. We'll get through this. I mean, that's really a couple that stays together. If mm -hmm. you can get over that. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, can you just... You can remodel your home. Uh, you can... Anything. 
And uh, while we're on that, I'm going to cut my chest open. I don't need you to suck on my nipple for about 30 minutes. Okay, yeah. you do that for me. <laughs> <laughs> and once it coming, so finally drawing attention to this, there are, there is so much tongue in this movie. And I, whew, it's coming from someone who's <laughs> eaten like an animal tongue before. Like, that's not what I, just, okay, just keep going. I, I can't, I can't, I can't even discuss it. It's just weird. Yeah, so you can't eat your cow tongues while watching that scene, John? Is that what you're saying? No, lengua is not on the menu anymore, Max, because <laughs> it's just far too sexualized. I do not need to see my tongue having pleasure when I'm about to put it into my mouth and have a taco. Like, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, with all this shit's happening, Van Helsing and his uh, his crew cock block and ruin the fun times for all of them. And then uh, Dracula gets super pissed and turns into like a super metal bat demon, talks a bunch of shit, and then transforms into a bunch of rats. Oh yeah, I love that part. That it was, was cool. almost kind of like so Candyman who turns into bees. Yeah, it was like it, it seemed. A lot, yeah, that part was cool. That the whole you know rat king's nest thing, Ugh. and then they just like scatter down. I mean, I don't know. He's probably he probably Dracula was practicing that for weeks or something <laughs> because he probably walked away and be like that looked fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That was cool. If you look closely, <laughs> there's one of those rats that's actually looking back to admire what's going on. That's total, that's total <laughs> bullshit, but still, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> yeah, Gary Ullman was in that costume, too, during that scene, which was pretty cool. That makes total sense. Yeah. Awesome. Only Although Gary he said he felt super insecure because he didn't think he was creepy enough. I'm like, you look creepy enough. You were slimy yeah. enough, my dude. Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Your crosses do nothing. It's like, Jesus yeah. Christ. Blah. Blah. God. Mm. God, my Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So after this, Ben Helsing uh, hypnotizes Mina so she can tell him where to find her bat bay. As the good guys, uh, they embark on a rat race at Dracula's castle, hoping that they can beat him there before he becomes too powerful. Oh, yeah. The The race. Now that was fun because like the music was going on. It was mm. like you know the, you see one side and then you see the other side and you're and you're and you know what's going to happen. You know everyone's going to end up in the castle or in front of the castle. You, you, it's you're, you're going to get there, but for some reason I'm thinking like maybe they'll get there five minutes early and it'll be like one of those <laughs> <laughs> too late kind of buzzing endings. the gate to get in. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and then they're just banging on the thing <laughs> i you know i so i've i've been on this kind of motif the entire time about optics um i i don't think that um the roma people and their private protection services are well reflected in this film <laughs> not very inept mercenaries at all they're loyal mm -hmm. they 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 shovel dirt and then ship it to england without any questions asked because why not he, our you know our boss has to sleep in dirt okay fine but they don't, they only managed to kill one of three dudes that are chasing them when they're trying to get their boss back to his house. And they're all like, what, 10 of them? Something oh, like that, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just going to say, I am not, when I become rich and wealthy and I take over the planet and I really fuck up Hawaii, I'll talk to you off mic about why I hate Hawaii. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> but I am not going to hire gypsies as my personal security after watching this movie it's not very good mm. bad resume yeah hmm. uh, well you know what i say robots then robots are trained animals but like cool ones <laughs> oh my God. like like the rats i mean like you could really multi-use you know like, or like uh would the penguin used his own penguins you know with the rocket oh there you go and batman returns you see no. that's maybe the way to go now oh that's a gosh. team of goons I can get on. Just can you? Can a bunch you of like, penguins with explosives. Caroline, I want you to be my life coach. <laughs> that's what I'm here for, really. Just to... <laughs> I need robots now. <laughs> oh, but anyway, sorry guys, I went off. Yeah, so you know, you get some train car talk, and then Mina turns into a full blown vampire and tries to seduce Van Helsing with uh, her singing trio of Dracula brides behind her. But then he uh, sets up some circle of fire and cuts off the bride's heads. This is all confusing at this part. It, it, it happens. <laughs> it, it does happen. Um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know what? The Germans, the Germans have, they have the, the full collection of their sexual urges. So he was able to fight this off. 
Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. It's one turn of the century German does. Just cut their head off. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. He cuts. Jesus Christ. After he wins. And with no effort whatsoever. He just, just did it like this. Uh, what? Almost 60 year old man. Just, just <laughs> cutting off heads and being like, ah, all right. What, uh, what's next? I mean, <laughs> don't do that again. <laughs> bad, bad kitties, bad. <laughs> he literally. Wait a you didn't have to pee after all, didn't you? <laughs> so speaking, over. speaking to your point, Caroline, he literally went and killed all of Dracula's cats. Yes. Um, yes he took care of that yeah. that that pest problem. As a mm-hmm. as a proud cat owner myself, I would be pissed. That would have been the first thing I would have noticed. My kitty don't been killed. I mean, just <laughs> my seductive kitties. <laughs> So this is also the time that my wife came in and like watched the movie and it's when Winona's like doing her weird witch chant. And the only thing that Nikki said the entire movie was Winona, huh? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and then and left the room. Yep. Just kept on doing laundry. <laughs> Nikki is zero bullshit. Yep. <laughs> All right. So the sun is going down as the good guys race to cut off Dracula before he can make it to his castle before sundown. As Jonathan and Quincy spiked Dracula in the heart and slit his throat, leaving Mina to finish the job. Yeah, that was cool. It was like, she has something to do. Or, <laughs> I, I didn't even try to do Keanu there, but it kind of <laughs> ended up there. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the it's, gist of it. Yeah. <laughs> you just need to trail off your thought, your train of thought, and then you're good. That's the Keanu. Uh, basically, we could have just dubbed you over his entire line right there, and that would have been even better. <laughs> <laughs> she has a purpose now. Exactly. And, and so she has to go and she has, she has to finish the job because everyone was just busy killing everyone else over. That's the fun thing. It's like this male pride. Um, it's like, I'll save you. But at the end, the lesson that we learn is that it's up to Mina, which is, <laughs> yeah. That's that's fine. That's great. That's fine. <laughs> but it but it ends in the weirdest way possible, though. It I I really thought it would be like more like a, all right, finally, battle. But uh, it, instead, it was kind of a it was a little more a sadder a sadder turn to it. I yeah. Thought. I actually did feel bad uh, at the end of it. You know, and I I felt bad Weirdly, a little yeah. bit. It's you know, and then Mina kind of goes in, she does her bit, and you know, Dracula kind of starts making his peace with everything. And I slowly realized that this was actually probably just a reused script from Blues Brothers because Dracula was on a mission from God the whole fucking time. <laughs> <laughs> like fuck, like really, like God's been watching. God still cares. I think- you uncovered something now, and this podcast is going to be three hours long. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm game. I got a whole, I got, I still have a good amount of this bottle of absinthe. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. It's time to break down that dancing scene with James Brown at the end of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> now that would have been a better movie. Papa was a rolling stone. Boom, boom, boom. Not James Brown. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so to wrap up the movie, in the same spot that his wife died, Dracula tells Mina to give him peace. So she stabs him fully through the heart with his sword, chops off his head, and now the Draxters can finally be at peace as his curse is lifted and the movie ends. Yeah, so it was all like pretty much miscommunication that lasted 400 years <laughs> <laughs> countless people had to die for it's like Dracula should have like been like I'm sorry for all the trouble <laughs> <laughs> press release all right so about in this era the League of Nations is out I'm gonna get in front of the League of Nations it'll be around forever you know no worries and uh I'm sorry Really sorry. Um, also sorry about my lineage to George W. Bush. You know what I'm talking about once we get down the road. Uh, like, <laughs> and it's just, it's yeah, exactly. It's like a sports conference at the end. And like, well, you know, uh, a lot of things happened out there. And uh, a lot of things I regret, like renouncing God, and <laughs> drinking the blood of Satan. Uh, <laughs> Which I'm told is quite good with a bowl of pasta. But... <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was a team effort today, and um, you know, I'd like to thank all my brides for for drinking all that blood and killing people. And you know, at the end of the day, it just kind of comes down to 
you know, what do you, what do you practice for? And, um, the other team was just more prepared. <laughs> now I don't have a head. <laughs> that's right. true. And scene. That's how yeah, it's seen. <laughs> and good. All right, folks. Break. It's great. Everyone give each other a golf clap. That's good. All right. All right. We All right now let's get into uh, Dracula dead and loving it. <laughs> <laughs> I was honestly, I, I get that movie mixed up. And I was like, where's that big dancing mirror scene? I thought that was in this movie. <laughs> I yeah, really then, just, great, then, then Homer just spiking Dracula through the dick and just going, dad, that's not his heart. Oh. I feel like you could really pull like, so I've never seen Jesus Christ Superstar or anything, but you could do a Dracula Superstar like spinoff kind of a thing like that because he's a rocker. Hmm. Dude, he had, yeah. he had sunglasses before they were invented. <laughs> I know. I mean, yeah. I can Google that one point. I'm like, when were sunglasses invented? Like, that only works in, in, like, the HBO universe. Like, there, there weren't sunglasses back then. Like, it's just the way it is. <laughs> the blue tint. Blue tint, yeah. <laughs> all right, time for trivia. Not not a whole lot here, but... All right. So, for the wedding with, um, with Winona and Keanu, it was... Recorded in full as like a full Greek Orthodox um, in a you know Greek Orthodox church, so they were technically married in that movie. Oh, with the Greeks! Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's great. I was I was actually curious about that. I looked over at at my wife Lisa and I said, "Wow, I'm really happy to see that the Orthodox Church is you know working with the Christian the, the Catholics on this one or the other end of the you know the whatever it is. Like this is good. They're accepting. It's fine." <laughs> Um, as mentioned before, with all the practical effects, Coppola fired his entire special effects team and hired his son to help out with all the practical effects. He likes to keep it in the family. Yep. In the family. Yes. Yeah. No, oh, he has forever. <laughs> uh, and then there's his wine. Yep. Also, Gary Oldman wore a bat suit before Christian Bale. So we got that going. That's not really a trivia fact. That's just more fun. But <laughs> so. Carolina, fun fact about Max. Um, if he could have a tattoo of like the bat symbol on his stomach, he would. Oh, on it on your stomach. Well, it chest no, it would be, anywhere. It, no, no, no. It would be like right above my dick, and I'll call my Bruce Wang. There you go. Yep. There you go. I thought about that doing was, that when I was like 17. Just, I'm glad I didn't. Clearing yeah. the room. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone turning off, including Everybody, our yeah, only right. And that's it, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Hold My Popcorn with special guests. <laughs> <laughs> Stomach was better. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take it from here now. <laughs> I'm the captain now. <laughs> I'm the captain now. <laughs> All right, moving on like that didn't happen. 99% of the film was done on a soundstage because the studios didn't trust Coppola after um, Apocalypse Now. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? What do you mean? <laughs> he, I mean, they did a whole documentary on how he lost his mind. He had a heart attack and bankrupt. But movie. there's that, but he, he basically like refounded America with that film. I mean, that was the founding fathers lost their minds. Well... <laughs> Arguably, you're probably already fucking batshit crazy, but still, America. Yeah. You know what? It's it's better on a soundstage. I like it better because, as I said before, it it did look like you're watching like a uh, theater. Mm -hmm. uh, you're mm -hmm. watching like you're you're going to watch a show. I mean, it's not a play. It's not a musical, but it's what's in the middle of that. It's one of that, mm -hmm. and that was cool. It's extremely superficial too, so it's better to do that in like a neutral setting than out in the open. Yeah, and yeah. I mean to be honest, I'm gonna. They definitely used like, all right, Anthony, stage left. No, no, Anthony, you're on the left. Like <laughs> that happened. <laughs> <laughs> so Liam Neeson campaigned very hard for the role of Van Helsing, and he was uh, in consideration. But then Sounds of the Lambs came out, so they went with Anthony Hopkins. You know what? I would have been happy with either one, but yep. Anthony Hopkins kind of just takes the lead by a hair. I'd say. Yeah. I'm all about yeah. Anthony. Good narrator. And did you know that Anthony, this is a fun fact, and shut me up, Max, when, once I start rambling, but he <laughs> asked Martha Stewart to start dating, and she thought about Hannibal Lecter and said, I could, I, I, all I'll see is just Hannibal Lecter if I date you. I can't. <laughs> Martha Stewart turned down Sir Anthony Hopkins. I also do a ah. cooking show. Yeah. I love Martha. <laughs> 
But how did Anthony Hopkins do it, though? I mean, you got to find the... I, I mean, he's mm-hmm. like, I just want to <laughs> rip out your heart and cut off your head. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if he asked Dracula, you know, for some help. There you go. There's a spinoff. You know, there's <laughs> right something. There. I mean, I, you know, it probably was the first call, like, you know, hello, Martha. Like, that. that's all it probably took. It was... Uh, hey. <laughs> We yeah. should do a mini episode. Yeah. Would you like to have dinner with me? <laughs> a nice Chianti. Yeah. A fine Chianti. Yes, exactly. It's a fava beans. Yeah, it's a fava. <laughs> um, so I was going to mention this earlier too, but uh, for the Keanu role, Francis Ford Coppola wanted Johnny Depp, but the studio went with Keanu because they thought the girls would like him. Which, uh, well, yes and yes, <laughs> but yeah, but also yeah, yeah. but. Y- yeah, that's the rest of our conversation. Yeah, but that but John for the role. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, it's just the Keanu Reeves. I mean, he did. The, I would say he did the best he could uh, <laughs> with Johnny Depp. We. I mean, I don't know if you guys seen Sleepy Hollow, but oh, yeah. he could pull. He could pull it off. He could pull off a period piece, uh, of course, and, and accents. Uh, you know, I would have preferred a, a Johnny Depp, maybe, I guess. He would have been well, perfect for this. I, I think so. Yeah. I think I don't way. get, though. So I'm sorry, John. Like, the thing I no. don't get, though, is like he was coming off of Edward Scissor's hands. Um, he was dating Winona at the time. Like, why would you not go with him? Oh, good point. Good point. I don't, well, also, like, no, we, I, want the, we want the boyfriend from, uh, from that Steve Martin movie instead. Parenthood. <laughs> You want that guy. So Keanu <laughs> has aged with the best of them. Um, if I were to choose from young Keanu to old Keanu, I would choose old Keanu, not just because of the beard and, you know, a few city miles, you know, on the odometer there. But uh, this guy, he has uh, charities that he doesn't put his name on because he's just yeah, that he's good a of a guy. guy, but only in later in life, only later in life. No. Yeah. He, yeah, yeah I, I I know that everybody loves uh, Keanu, and you know what? I, I'm on board too. I'll I'll join I'll join that because I've been watching his movies forever. I mean, oh, do, who hasn't? Do, Bill and Ted. Oh, such well, a great there, movie. there's Bill and Ted. Do, now, do not misunderstand me. Now, um, uh, uh, what's his face? Oh, fuck, I've already forgotten his name. Absinthe. <laughs> um, <laughs> Dracula. Dracula. <laughs> 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 okay, moving on. We'll, we'll we'll get the name whenever it comes to you, John. <laughs> oh, I thought we were moving on. I thought that was we're pulling John back from the abyss. We're doing it. We're doing it. Let's just pull me back. Green we'll fairy. Be, Let's yeah. take control. Um, yeah. So the two more here. Um, they had a lot of merchandise. Jesus Christ. They had a lot of merchandise marketing for this movie, including a comic book, video game, pinball game, replica weapons, and a coffin shaped VHS box, which is fucking awesome. Oh, that is cool. Mm. Wow, I di- I didn't know about any of this. Like, I guess when it came out, like, th- I guess there's not going to be any toys for a child, uh, <laughs> <laughs> or nor was should I have seen it. But you know, HBO eventually you, you get yep. around to it. But that that is cool that they actually made a comic book about it. I mean, yeah. I I know this is a this is not Coppola's store. This is the, this is Bram Stoker's Dracula. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like with a comic book, do they like? put Keanu Reeves on there? I mean, Ooh, like, I did they know. draw him in there? Because that's... <clears throat> That'd be kind of cool, too. He looks yeah. good drawn. I mean, after, what is it, a scanner darkly or whatever? Still haven't seen it. Mm. Um, tried. I was just... Anyways, uh, it, he looks good drawn. Very long face, John <laughs> Kerry. John Kerry looked great. Political, all those comic books and all that bullshit, but uh, he would have done John well. John Kerry looks like a caricature. But could you imagine like the toy line with this one where it's like, oh, yeah, all the weapons can actually cut your well done steak. You know, like <laughs> not the Lucy it's, toy. It's yeah. just a bunch of blood like a, just you squeeze it and just a bunch of blood just flies out of it. Yeah. So, you know, to your point, Carolina, I don't see the toy line coming out very strong for this for this brand. It's not. No. Ooh, well, I, yeah. I, just, I just Googled the comics. It looks pretty cool. It's pretty dark. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Huh. All right. All right, last one. Um, this movie made two hundred fifteen million dollars worldwide and it won three Oscars. Wow! It won three Oscars. Yeah, Good sound for them. sound editing, makeup, and costume design. The most important Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> the ones we all know and love. 
Yeah, I, I guess. I mean, I, I sound editing was not on the top of my list for some reason <laughs> when I was watching this movie. I thought the movie looked cool, though. How was it not nominated for cinematography? Yeah. I mean, or yeah. Even director. Was a lot of it. Uh, I am not an expert, obviously. But uh, it, there was a lot of cinematography, and I thought it, it, it looked really cool. The whole vibe of it, or the whole what they call color palette. Yeah. Mm. Of it. Huh. I go with that. <laughs> ha, 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 Anthony yeah. Hopkins. Ha, 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 ha. I'm just going to laugh at you for no reason. <laughs> but, yeah, no, cinematography, I mean, to your, your point, like, you, you see uh, any of the scenes where you're in a POV uh, view of Dracula running around as, like, let's say, werewolf Dracula, because that's a thing. And it's very creature movement. You know, it's, it's, it's sprint real quick, stop, real, you know, look around, sniff, and then keep clawing our way up the staircase, you know, kind of a thing. And that was very effective yeah. in this, which I feel it's like a dead. million movies. Yes, exactly, exactly. All right, time for questions. Who is your favorite and least favorite in this? Ooh, favorite has got to be Van Helsing. All right, vampires. <laughs> I mean, as far as I mean, as far as characters go, right? Oh yeah, characters. No. Van yeah, yeah. Helsing's number one. Well, yeah, that my least favorite. I'm gonna have to go with. <sighs> it's so hard. It's hard uh, because everybody was, uh, you know, what, seen this movie so many times. It wouldn't make sense without anybody. Somebody I would like. Uh, or fine, I'll just pick one. <laughs> Richard E. Grant. Why not? Ah, yeah. <laughs> Fuck that guy. I mean, he was a little, a little dispensable. <laughs> he, I don't even know what happened to him at the end. So. <laughs> And we didn't really care what happened to him at the end no. either, which is the other point of that. Yeah, and and horrible, horrible goatee. <laughs> that is true. That, whatever. But remember, they won for makeup. I, I assume that goes with facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> so you, sir, are wrong. <laughs> so, so can you imagine, like, basically when it comes to the award for costumes and makeup, where they're just like, once it gets to the point, no idea how the fuck they did that. They win. Like, if you just can't yeah. comprehend how the hell they did it, they win. That's probably it. How did... The best way to do how it. How did they super We can glue? all go home. <laughs> they can all go home. <laughs> We're done here. That's safe. Best for last. <laughs> so my favorite is also going to be Van Helsing because he really brought the movie back from the from the brink. I mean, just between him, just like scream laughing in people's faces for no reason, um, unprompted to the uh, you know ever present. Just oh, um, Doctor Van Helsing, yeah. Did you do this? <laughs> yeah, mm, oh, yeah. <laughs> and the hair looked fantastic. And once again, the Germans—they're always great. I love them. My least favorite <laughs> is definitely going to be Dracula. So old Dracula, his haircut. That is the worst character in the entire movie. It's very rigid. <laughs> he doesn't leave a lot of room for, you know, moving around and being you know, nimble on the stage. Uh, it didn't mm. add much for me. Um, too pointy, very aggressive. Um, kind of scared me. Kind of stale. Yeah. You could yeah, say that. No, you're right. You're right. Because once you get older, don't you get out of your awkward phase? And then you're like, I finally like know how to fix my hair now. Yeah. He kind of regressed on that. Mm. Definitely. And you'd think with that much experience in your life um, or lack or unlife, whatever you want to look at it like, that you would be able to figure out how to make that work. Yeah. <laughs> He's using the Rogaine. I like, and... I like unlife. Unlife. Unlife is good. <laughs> I'm just living my best unlife, girls. All right? It's, fine. it's cool. It's all right. Don't touch a thermostat. <laughs> <laughs> Fight me. <laughs> um, my favorite I'm going to just say is Gary Oldman as Dracula because yeah. he actually was a believable Dracula I thought he mm -hmm. was awesome in this mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah. he was he was very believable I mean like I, I never questioned if that was an actor for years mm. so yeah you're right yeah he was on a roll Sid Vicious uh, Lee Harvey Oswald and then Dracula I think like all in a row it's <laughs> <Just> like damn <laughs> playing some lovable characters <laughs> And, and also in my favorite, uh, Air Force One. Oh, uh, yeah. He plays a great villain. Great Russian. Because he, he'll just shoot anyone. He doesn't care. He doesn't care who. Oh, my God. Oh. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> we just became best friends. I... There's so much room for activities becoming best friends. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't thought about Air Force One in so many years. I'm going to go make my wife watch this with me. Oh, my God. I love Gary I saw, in that. I saw it with my Girl, husband my like a week ago. It's a <laughs> 
Well, you know, it's 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 a movie you got to watch once a year. Oh, yeah. right, that is a fun movie. Yeah, stay away from parachutes, Gary. Get off my plane. <laughs> We had you have to say when you bring up Air Force oh. One. I was waiting. For oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Ding. <laughs> All right, my least favorite is Keanu as Jonathan. Just the opposite of Dracula. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Keanu. Reasonable. Very yep. reasonable. I. Uh, John Wick has done wonders for his you. career. Keanu yeah. Definitely agree I think he admitted to that too. He's like, yeah, I wasn't good in that. <laughs> <laughs> I. He also. You know, it's funny. He does not look good in gray. I don't think that Keanu is going to be a silver fox. No. Oh, no. I really don't. I just, unless he shaves his head, I don't know what he's going to do. Maybe he'll just dye his hair, but. I think I, he's already dyeing his hair. Oh, you think? Yeah. yeah. He's like 55. Yeah, you should check his pillow cover. <laughs> I'm sure it's all black. <laughs> I mean, he seems like kind of a sad guy after, ever since seeing that meme of him on a, you know, a park bench sharing his sandwich with a pigeon. Like that seems kind of bad. Yeah. I mean, that's just not good. Yeah. He's had a rough, rough life. Let's just move into the next thing. So now I'm starting to feel bad for Keanu. Um, He's a movie star. He's a famous, good-looking movie star. <laughs> Thank you, Carolina, for bringing us back to us. He dated Charlize Theron. He's doing fine. He is part of the bourgeoisie, Max. <laughs> we can't even touch his big toe. That's how cool he is. He's too high up. <laughs> All right, well, just so IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes have their own rating systems, we decided to make our own. So, guys, what would you rate Dracula? So, oh. This is all you, Carolina. <laughs> oh, I, oh, I didn't know we're going in order. All right. I guess we're going to go in alphabetical order then. <laughs> uh, as we tend to do, yes. <laughs> well, the movie as a whole, Dracula, oh, man, I'm going to give it... Five out of five blood-filled crucifixes. Woo! Woo! Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm going to give it a five out of five. It's not, as you said before, it's not a great movie. It's not a bad movie. It's just, it's a movie. And <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to uh, translate that really well into being like, it's a movie, guys. You just have to watch it. You, you just you got, got it. it. That was on the VHS yeah. cover quotes for uh, for reviews. Caroline Hidalgo, it's a movie. It's a movie. <laughs> Honest, where are you going? Come back. Watch this movie. It's art. Art. <laughs> so, what about you, John? I will give this three quarts of crucifix blood mixed with four measures of absinthe, and is also called the cocktail blood of Christ. Mm. All right. Tasty. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna get, we're, we're totally that, not yeah. silently judging you at all. No, right you now. you totally shouldn't. That that didn't come out easily. That was bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna give this four four bestiality werewolf pumps out of mm -hmm. one fire dialect coach for uh, whoever was in charge of Winona and Keanu's accents in this. Wait one one fire dialect coach. Yes. <laughs> They didn't right. do their job. You're right. They they sucked at it. <laughs> I I really do feel like that Keanu got on here because he knew somebody. Yeah, Coppola. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. Hey, Coppola, I, I tried some of your, your Cabernet the other week. It was great. You're fucking hired, kid. Like, <laughs> I like your style. <laughs> you want to be in the pitches? <laughs> Put on this nothing. gray. Put on this gray wig. <laughs> well, I guess he thought he's like maybe he's like my Al Pacino, you know, like maybe he thought <laughs> for a while and then he realized later because he's like, well, the ladies, you know, they they love him, they love him. Like, well, we'll just get him, you know. Why? Not? I mean, it works sometimes. Just, just <laughs> you would be my muse. Work this time. <laughs> All right, now I guess I'll just do a movie with Ron Williams as a little kid instead. Okay. <laughs> Oh, right. That was plan Jack. B. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. That was a weird year for him. Okay. <laughs> All right. Before we wrap up here, any um, any movie recommendations? Uh, Well, I just saw Invisible Man the other day. That yeah. Awesome. Oh, how is it? That's a good one. It's really that good. It's, yeah. it's yeah. really good. I Yeah. Totally recommend it. Really. I, I'll watch it again. I loved it. Mm. Um, yeah, that's the 
think that's the last movie I saw, really. <laughs> <laughs> the last and Air days. Force One. And Air Force One. I recommend Air Force One heavily as well. <laughs> Those two. So, Max, we're going to change the intro music to the episode to, to this episode to be all about my Nelly. Air Force One. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, we're going to do it. It's be fun. <laughs> Honestly, The Witch, 2015, horror movie, mm. very slow burn, very um, um, environmental horror almost. Um, you just always have a sense of dread throughout the whole thing. Uh, great twist in the very end. Worth everybody's moment, minute, however long it takes to watch this thing, do it. It's that good. It really is. This is mm. what a horror should be. It should bother you slowly to where you're thinking about it for a couple days afterwards, not staying up and having nightmares or anything, but just disturbed on a basic level. And that's what this is. Boom. So for me, I've been on a huge eighties horror binge for the past week or so. So I, I got three and John oh, appreciate these. I think shit. All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. First one is house from 1985. I don't know oh, if you've ever yeah, seen that. Yeah. It's a fun one. William Cad, yeah. who's the, the main lead, surprisingly, like, very well acted, <laughs> weirdly. And then also you got Norm from uh, from Cheers in that movie, too. Norm. <laughs> uh, second one's going to be Waxwork from 1988. You guys ever seen that one? No, no, no I've not seen it. It's good. So it's a, it's a fun adaptation of uh, just The House of Wax. Um, but if you like Cabin in the Woods, you'll like this movie. It's It's similar. It's got a nice little twist to it. Okay. Oh, about, that's cool. Yeah. It made fucking no money when it came out in theaters. It made like $500,000, <laughs> but it's it's good. Um, then the last one is Night of the Creeps from 1986. I haven't seen that one. You'll, have, you and Marcus need to watch things. it. Yeah. I've, yeah, I've heard great things about it. Uh, definitely want to see that. I mean, the, the title alone is a great title, so... Yeah, why the fuck not? So Max sends me this clip last night <laughs> of just like a basically a zombie like coming through a window and just some guy with a big mustache and Tom a gun Atkins. going, yeah, Mac, it's, <laughs> it's Miller time and just shoots it in the head. <laughs> like, it's like, whoa, we're watching it. <laughs> All the monsters, their heads just split open whenever they get shot and bugs come flying out of it. It's, it's great, though. That's Tom perfect. Atkins That's is perfect. fucking hilarious in that movie. <laughs> He's playing the seasoned, like Tom Atkins from uh, Halloween 3, Dr. Dan. But oh. he's playing like, the, he's in a completely different movie. Like intentionally, it's supposed to be one of those stupid B movies. And he's like this really just gritty uh, detective in the movie full of like fucking just rambling idiots. <laughs> it, it's hilarious. <laughs> it's Miller time. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Well, before we head out of here, is there anything you want to plug, Carolina? Well, uh, No Dogs in Space. We were just Ooh. recording today. Yeah, check Ooh, out. We're nice. doing a new Ramon series. Ooh, so, awesome. Definitely. And everything else is either on hiatus or done. But <laughs> really fine with the meds. Uh, this is the funniest thing. This is like happened like this week. Not the funniest thing. The funniest thing in a sad way. Unfortunately, the show is over, but we have 200 episodes Almost. Whoa. Of wow. That, uh, that uh, people could enjoy Damn. of of movies uh, with me and Frank, you know, me, Frank, and Trace from the guys from Mystery Science Theater 3000. And like, it's, I mean, we've had such a great time. We were even talking about like, what should we do next? Like, that's how excited we are to keep doing stuff. Uh, but like, because we like talking about movies, like, I, you know, the one who's like, yeah, Keanu Reeves, yes! And then they're, like, the ones being, like, kind of, like, the old grumpy men from the Muppets and, you know, like, kind of squatting down whatever thing I hold up. It's More it's like really Keanu fun. needs to get out of here. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, but, you know, this whole coronavirus kind of, like, messed up uh, you know, everybody, so I can't complain because, you know, things could be worse, of course, but... <laughs> Hey, we got a lot of episodes you want to check out. I'm going to promote that. I don't care. I don't give a fuck. No. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> Listen, to it. Listen to it. Listen to every episode. Let's fucking dance, dude. Do yeah. it. Yeah. And then go back and listen to this one. This one on the Hot Pop hot Popcorn Candy Channel. I don't know. What <laughs> That's what it's going to be fucking called now, the Hot Popcorn Candy Channel. <laughs> but yeah, check out No Dogs in Space. <laughs> I had to listen to that today. I was listening to the other Sid and Nancy episode. It was really enjoyable. Oh, 
very cool. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, we do. Uh, we're doing punk history right now, and then I think in like uh, maybe when we're done with the series in like ten episodes or so, we're gonna do a new season on like nineties, you know, alternative music or something like cool. that. Something like we know. It can't be like you know classical music. I mean, because it's got to be something like we really, really, really know. Well, Have to take a deep dive into Mozart. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually. I kind of want to one day. One day. <laughs> Interesting life. Got, mm-hmm. got a lot done. Kind of died like a rock star, too. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. We should have done Amadeus. <laughs> <laughs> so many regrets. So many. Oh, that's the beauty of the quarantine. You can fix every wrong. <laughs> You're yeah, and that's the beauty of doing a movie podcast. There's a lot of them to pick from. So we'd love to have you back on sometime, Carolina. We yes. really appreciate you coming on. Please. Uh, oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I'd love to come on, especially since uh, I need to borrow, you know, a cup of podcast sugar now that I'm all out of <laughs> movie podcasts. <laughs> Can I just, I'm just going to take over your podcast. That's just what's going to happen. Executive producer. Carolina Hidalgo presents Hold My Popcorn, Candy Crush, whatever the fuck else yeah. you said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yep. thank you very much, guys. You, this, yeah, this was a lot of fun. You guys are great. <laughs> oh, thanks so much. Awesome. Likewise, really. It means a lot. Yep. Thanks so much for coming on. Cool. And, uh, and stay tuned. This is where we're going to be staying with the magical stuff and castles and all that shit. Um, just a lot less blood and sex. Crucifix so blood! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we're going to be starting a Harry Potter movie series, which, fingers crossed, will not last as long as this quarantine. But I don't know about that. <laughs> Harry Potter so, means oh, that's like cool. that's two years yeah. worth of, or worth of episodes. Be- I know. And we're gonna have another last podcast network host on that one. So stay tuned, stay safe, wash your hands, stay away from everybody, besides the people that uh, you already live with. And um, that's about it. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, wash your hands, deuces, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Oh,